honoured and it's a, a great pleasure uh, to be invited to say a few words at this inaugural roundtable discussion. Um, for me, just being here at the, the University and International House, um, where I've had the privilege of being able to uh, present a few uh, lectures, talks to uh, students from International House um, as part of the Global Leadership Program. It's lovely to be back here again and to be uh, able to, uh, I think, uh, come together with people who have an understanding of the importance about the program for the International House and International House itself. Um, I only learned um, as I was a Rotary Peace Fellow in 2017 that it was Rotary, the organisation, that initially funded International House in universities. So there's a very strong connection even with my professional experience with the institution of International House. So I feel I'm in, a, in an environment place where I'm with very like-minded people with um, like-minded values and, and, and interests. Uh, as Ross said, my background has been in international humanitarian um, aid and development. And for th that experience, um, for me, education is not just about developing our academic skills. And I see my education to be able to be looking at people to become what I call successful learners creative and, and uh, confident individuals and active and informed global citizens for today. Uh, we need to focus, uh, I think, also on not just learning to, to ask questions and to have critical thinking, but also to focus on, I believe, uh, strong and respectful relationships, particularly with people from different backgrounds, countries, religions, cultures. And for me, having worked in, I can say, probably um, during my last 25 years of working in this uh, international humanitarian, I have been to about 40 countries and spent um, a good part of those 25 years in mostly countries with war zones. And Many of you might know, but 90% of today's conflicts um, uh, are, affect um, casualties who are civilians. And most of these civilians are women and children. So a lot of my work was working with women and children, being able to uh, understand their needs, and in particular, um, look at ways in which we could build um, respectful, strong relationships with them so that we were able to be in a position to work together for what many of the women and children and the refugees around the world want, and that is peace. Achieving genuine respect, mutual respect, I think um, involves focusing on opportunities um, that present what I call looking at the points of commonality that you find with people. Um, in this world, when, we, when I worked in my field, we were always using what we call this approach called do no harm. The do no harm concept comes from the Hippocratic Oath, many of you might know who study medicine. Um, that's one of the promises that doctors, physicians um, abide by as part of their medical ethics. And when we look at do no harm, because my work is dealing with people, um, what are the things we do is we look at what are the points of commonality, what are the connectors within society? Because in any given society, you have dividers and connectors. And one of the things we, we do is we try to find relationships where we find points of commonality. So to me, that is the key aspect of where the importance of understanding how education plays a role in trying to enable us to find those points of commonality with individuals, however different uh, uh, people are. My experiences of looking at this, um, for example, last year I was in Thailand um, and I um, 
conducted my first training workshop um, for emerging women and youth leaders on understanding um, the notion of positive peace. I also talked about the Sustainable Development Goals, which I'll talk about a little bit um, later. And also in Sudan, where I worked with communities to look at how they were able to address their issues of wanting to work with people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds, resolving the conflicts, for example, between pastoralists and agricultural farmers. One of the ways we were able to bring these two different communities together, which was on the border of Sudan and South Sudan, was we developed peace committees that were run by women because the women found that the point of commonality was that both the pastoralists and the agricultural farmers needed to trade. They needed to have goods. And the only way you could do that was by having a market where both agricultural farmers and, and pastoralists could exchange on trade. And it was the women who set up the markets, who set up the trade agreements, and they were the, the women peacemakers. I also believe that for one of the most important aspects of being able to build mutual respect is also to support what we call international rules-based order. And that involves supporting international law, particularly human rights law. And for, for many those of you who might have worked in similar experience with me as working also in the humanitarian development field, um, after about 10 years working in the humanitarian field, I was actually quite stressed, as many of you might know. This is very stressful work, working in war zones. But I came back, and I came back to Australia after um, many years working overseas and um, spoke to my professor here at Sydney University and said that it's important that people who want to work in this field need to understand what their human rights are because this is actually what we're trying to do when we're working in conflict zones. We're trying to protect the human rights of all people. So um, this led to me designing a human rights course which is actually now still being a core unit that's being taught in the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies here with the Masters in Peace and Conflict Studies program at Sydney University. Just talking now about sustainable development goals, what I'm doing now in 2019 is that many of you might know, just I'd like to ask a show of hands, has anyone heard of the sustainable development goals? I think some of the students, yes, you can see a lot of students here, particularly a lot of international students. Um, in 2015, all 193 countries came together, the UN, New York, to, to formally adopt the 17 Sustainable Development Goals um, to transform our world by 2030. So maybe for, for those who do know what they are, I'll just go in and just show the goals. This is a, a very important global agreement that the whole world, which is very unusual, as many of you might know, it's very hard to get all countries to agree on something. And this is one thing that all countries in the world have agreed to, which is very, for many of us, gives us a reason for hope that we have a vision and a plan to be able to achieve a future that we all want. 
So maybe I can just start with just telling to those of you who want to know what the goals are, can I start with goal one? If you can just say what the goal is. Goal two? <laughs> Zero. Goal three? Yes. Speak, can you speak a bit loud so everyone can hear you? Goal four? Great. Goal five? Gender equality. Goal six? Clean water and sanitation. Great. Thank you. Goal seven? Affordable and clean energy. Great. Goal eight? Decent work and economic growth. Thank you. Goal nine? Infrastructure goal, good. Goal, goal 10? Reduce inequality. Thank you. Goal, and that's between, within countries and between countries. Um, goal 11? Thank you. Goal 12? Thank you. Goal 13? Climate action. Thank you. Goal 14? Life below water. Thank you. Goal 15? Thank you. Goal 16? Thank you. And goal 17, the last goal? Partnerships for the goals. Right. Thank you. As you can see from those goals, they represent what I call the five Ps. They are about people. They're, these goals are about us. They, the goals are universal. As I said, all countries have signed on to them. So they belong to all of us, uh, all, all around the world, because they're universal. The second thing is that the goals represent peace. And for many of us, these goals are all about having a future where we want peace to deal with chronic uh, conflicts, violent extremism, um, the, the pandemics around the world and so forth. The third uh, dimension is the planet. As you can see, many of the goals, particularly 13, 14, 15, relate to our environment. So in many ways, the goals are also to do with uh, protecting our planet. The, the, the fourth P is prosperity. We want people to be in a position to be able to have um, income equality and being able to have um, economic growth and to end up uh, to have a zero and uh, to end poverty, zero poverty. We also have the, the last P, which is partnerships. You can't achieve any of these goals unless we work together. So goal 17 is actually the enabler goal, which is all about achieving all these goals, has to be with partnerships, collaboration, and standing in solidarity with people. So these are the key dimensions of the goals, and all the 17 goals are underpinned by economic development, social development, and environmental sustainability. They're the three pillars. And if you look at the first six goals, they are actually um, articles that have come from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In other words, the right to food, the right to, um, in, uh, to have an adequate income, right to health, the right to education. These are actually human rights norms and standards. So the reason why this uh, Sustainable Development Goals agenda is so important now, particularly for students now, is because young people in particular um, are going to be the main beneficiaries of this by 2030. So we need to get young people very involved in implementing and achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. And students have an extremely important role to play because you've actually got the solutions. We're relying on you to have the creative solutions to the challenges that are being placed by achieving these goals. So um, I just wanted to say that um, maybe out of today, uh, for me, if you can speak to someone that you haven't met before, just today, and just speak for, have a conversation with that person and ask them, what are you doing about sustainable development goals? Thank you.